Another limitation of RGB color mixing is though you can mix to many different colors, you can only mix to one color in one particular way. With X7 color mixing, you can mix to the same color in multiple ways as to affect how it's rendering other colors. Now you can't see this on a white surface, so I'm going to use these strategically placed Hawaiian shirts because they have lots of colors in them. Right now I'm mixing amber from red and green colored LEDs. This of course is how most LED products make amber, and to my eyes this looks like amber. But let's compare this to the amber colored LED. Almost immediately you see a major difference between the two. They're rendering the colors of the Hawaiian shirts very differently. And this difference makes a bit of sense. The amber colored LED has a very narrow color range and doesn't render many colors, so it's making the shirts look almost monochromatic. Whereas the red and green amber, well, it makes the reds pop and it makes the greens pop. And it's not to say that one way is better than the other, but with Celador, you have a choice as a designer as to how you would like to light an object. And in fact, if you take red, amber, and green and mix them all together, you get a very vibrant, rich, and lifelike amber light coming out of the unit. So how do we use this in real life? Say you've been asked to light a mural on the side of a restaurant, and you've chosen to use LED technology because it's energy efficient and low maintenance. If you use the typical RGB fixture, you can make a color that sort of looks like white. And although you can see all the colors on the mural, well, some colors are popping more than others. As soon as we add in the four additional colors of X7 color mixing, like I'm doing right now, you can almost immediately see how the colors begin to balance out to each other. And the white light that's hitting the mural looks a lot more natural than it did coming out of the RGB unit. Now let's move away from the restaurant and into the theater and do something that's typical. Light a night scene on an actor. Now of course it's a night scene, so we're gonna start off with the blue LEDs because that's just the natural place to start. Right now I'm just shining the blue LEDs in Celador on the actor, and everybody has blue LEDs, but we also have indigo LEDs. So we can add the indigo LEDs to this and get a much richer and deeper color of blue. Now say this scene were to take place underneath the full moon, so I need to make a color that evokes moonlight in the audience. Well, moonlight isn't this deep colored blue, it's more of a silvery colored blue, but we have cyan LEDs in our unit, and by adding cyan to this color of blue, well, we can really make it more of that silvery color we're trying to accomplish. Now, if we were to do this with a gel in front of the source four, that gel would inevitably let some wavelengths of red colored light through it, and that would react with the pigment in the actor's skin, and they wouldn't look so cold and drab like they do right now. So by adding just a little bit of that red LED to this mix, we could really bring life to the actor on stage and hit dead on that beautiful color of moonlight blue. Now let's move away from the theater and think about lighting a sports announcer sitting in front of a window at a NASCAR race. The challenge of this is that you have to balance your camera's white balance to the color of light that's coming in through the window at various parts of the day. With Celador, you can make a white colored light that's in balance with the window at closer to 5600 Kelvin in the middle of the day. And then as the sun begins to set towards the end of the race and it becomes dusk, you could readjust the white color coming out of the Celador unit to be closer to say 2900 Kelvin. There's another limitation to RGB color mixing that lies in fading from one color to another through many colors. Notice as I take this psych from green to red in a 10 second count, only using the green and red LEDs. Notice that while I fade through some colors in the amber end of the spectrum, it's severely lacking. Now let's compare this same 10 second fade to X7 color mixing where we've not only added just an amber LED, but we've added cyan, indigo, even red orange to the mix to hit all the various colors within the amber end of the spectrum. Now it's not to say that one way is better than the other, Sometimes you want to fade from color A to color B through as little color as possible. At other moments, say a 10 minute sunset on a psych, you want to go through many, many different colors. 
With Celador, we provide the designers with the option of doing both. And this, of course, becomes much more pronounced as we go from green to red with X7 color mixing using the cyan, indigo, red, orange, even amber LEDs through the blue end of the spectrum. So the advantages of X7 color mixing are clear. The more color in the fixture, the better the light coming out of the fixture. 